defender Jack Welding and defender Curtis Corley. We'll start out with an opening statement from Coach Tillman, then we'll open it up for questions for the student athletes, and then finish up with questions for Coach Tillman. Um, obviously, proud of our, our players. Um, just uh, just a great job today, total team effort um, to come to Annapolis, uh, uh, obviously the state capital, and uh, just get a great turnout uh, from our fans, uh, which was huge for us. But um, you know, hadn't started in August uh, to see where this team has come and improved in so many different ways. Uh, I couldn't be more proud of them. Um, and also just want to tip my hat to Cornell. What they've done, uh, Pete Millman and staff has done, and, and their time there is truly incredible. Um, you know, to put themselves on the brink of going to the Final Four is, is just tremendous. So um, hats off to them, a lot of respect to them. Their future is really bright. They have some really good young players. NPS Nonprofit Services has the technology and know-how to achieve your nonprofit goals. We have all the tools that you need for your nonprofit to be successful, including tech support, consulting, development strategies, and business continuity to make sure your data is safe on-prem or in the cloud anywhere all the time. Call NPS at 877-797-8776. We're easy to reach and easy to work with. Questions for student athletes. Jesse Dockery from the Washington Post. A few just small questions for Jack. Uh, who who gave you your assignment that you'd be shadowing uh, Jeff today, and then sort of uh, when, when did when did you know you'd be doing that in this game? Uh, Cody Bernhardt gave me the uh, assignment, and I, he told me on like, the first day of practice. Okay. Was there a scout team player who made it? Jeff Dorian? Yes, Kyle Brickard. He did a great job actually all week. Uh, Prepared well for the game. So when you're when you're facing him, like what what are you looking at? I looked at his. Cornell, after I get my Maryland to Cornell the whole entire time, so pretty much face to face once again. Does it ever get awkward? Uh, not really. Be <laughs> in the game, you know. Okay. Was it, was, is it recognition from him? Like, I'm sure he sees it a lot. Does he ever think, like, you know, oh, this is going to happen again? Like, do you feel that from him at all? Like, uh, yeah, he's a great player. Um, obviously, he loves him He's a great player. And, uh, yeah. So. Hello, it's Patrick Stevens with Lacrosse Magazine. What kind of happened for you guys in the third quarter uh, offensively to create some separation there on this one? Um, I mean, we came out with uh, a lot of energy at the start of the first, and I think we tried to replicate that coming out of halftime. Um, and we definitely needed a spark. And you know, our, our face-off guys and wings did such a good job of getting us the ball. So um, having a lot of possessions and you know, just a good team effort, following, following our scout, you know, doing everything that we, we worked on all week, ultimately like, led us to. Um, such a strong third quarter. Curtis is a veteran now of three Final Fours in three years. This is the game to get you there. How does Coach Tillman prepare the team so well for a game like this? Because the past three or four weeks has not been the top of Maryland season. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you know, uh, you know, Coach Tillman, he does a really good job. You know, uh, we, we step out on the field and we have uh, overtime mentality every time on the on the practice field, um, and uh, I really felt like we got back to our roots this week in, in practice. Uh, we, we were going relentlessly out there. Um, it was a really tough week, and you know, I, I feel like it paid off in the end. Uh, Bubba, Jason Dumas, WDVM Sports in Hagers County. You guys have been really good all year, but uh, the freshmen just seem to be coming along week by week by week, and then, you know, today you guys um, were really outstanding, you, Logan, and you know the whole freshman court. Do you guys just starting to feel more and more comfortable game in, game out? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, our our coaches always talk about it, peaking at the right time, and I think I mean I don't think we've really peaked yet, but um, I think we're coming along uh, leaps and bounds. And uh, you know, I think the older guys really do such a good job of taking us under their wing, uh, kind of preparing us for big moments like today. Um, and just giving us little piece of advice or pieces of advice that really help us along the way. So, um, yeah, it's pretty much it. Meyer Consulting Engineers. In the past five years, our organization has completed over 1,300 projects in the U.S. and abroad, including many structures at the University of Maryland. For structural engineering and materials testing and inspection, call Meyer Consulting Engineers. Curtis. Uh when you, when you shut off a guy, you're playing basically five on five a whole lot of the way there. How much of an adjustment is that, and just how comfortable were you guys kind of playing that style, even if that's not necessarily what you've done a whole lot of the course? 
Yeah, um, you know, we, we found out we were doing that uh, basically right after the Cornell game was, was played last week. And, uh, I think Coach Jesse put together a really good plan. Uh, we executed it really well. Um, you know, Cornell's a really great team. You know, uh, I, I felt comfortable going through the entire week with Bryce down there with me. Um, just us, us I don't know, trying to lead the defense to, to this win today. So I felt pretty comfortable. You know, we just had, like I said earlier, one of the best practice weeks that we've had. So I felt like we had a really good job coming in there. Jack, earlier this year, you said that it was just going into Coach Bernhardt's office and sitting with him two, two to three times a week that's really helped you improve. What's been the biggest difference this season for you, and have you ever been tasked with shutting down a player the way that you work today? Um, I think the biggest difference from last year this year is definitely experience, and like I kind of get used to the speed of the game uh, coming from Texas. So, And then um, locking off, never really done, it, done it before, but um, that's my job this week, so I think I'm prepared for I did it. So. Wayne Viner, Turk Talk. Can you talk about the energy that shutting down their extra man brought to you? I saw the sidelines erupt multiple times when you guys turned them off. How'd you do that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll talk for on the field. Um, you know, just just you know, when we get that stop, yeah, you know, uh, I think it was the second half right when we started out with the extra man. When we got that stop, I just felt the whole entire stadium, you know, just light up. You know, I hear Russ Massey just like, "Yeah, what's up, Downers?" from the sideline. Literally hear him. <laughs> Over the stadium, you know, he's always yelling on the sideline. <laughs> he's like, oh, there you see Cam Brosh, like chest bumping whoever you want. You know, our sideline brings a lot of energy to us, and they, they really mean a lot to us. So it was really cool. Jack? Um, I would say Jack Wilson, Ethan Mincer, actually. They were like uh, talking to the whole entire game, and they were like, getting me hyped up. And uh, I thought it was really cool to hear the sideline. Can I get a follow up on that? What did the Adler goal mean to all of you? I know that John um, talked about it before, but how'd you guys? How'd that make you guys feel? Yeah, he's he's one of the, like the funniest kids on the team. Uh, if, I mean, right when he scored that, I just ran right down there, just jumped into him, you know, grabbed him, gave him a big hug. I was, <laughs> I was just really excited for him. It, it, you know, it kind of got like Bryce, all of us, just like wow, you know, you don't really put in that many minutes in game time, but in practice, you practice all the little things, you do all the little things right. And out here on game day, it paid off. So it's just really good for him to come in there and you know, give us another spark that I think we needed. So it was like really cool. Yeah, he's one of the hardest working guys on our team. So I thought it was pretty cool to see him get on the field and uh, play really well and score a goal. So. Yeah, um, just kind of going off what they say, like Adler's one of the nicest, like most well liked kids on the team. So for him to like come in, put in so much work day in and day out, and have it pay off, like it just sparked the whole team. Um, and his expression kind of said it all when he was running off the field. <laughs> but a lot of the uh, offense got started behind the cage. What was key to that success today, especially in that second half? Um, I think uh, I think Cornell's defense is just so buttoned down inside. We kind of had to spread them out, and one way we could do that was from X. Um, I mean, I think I also think I mean Jared Bernhardt was played phenomenal today and they were kind of locking off Connor Kelly so it was kind of hard to swing the ball from uh, top side so we kind of had to fix some things and Coach Rapper did such a great job um, coming out of halftime with a, a new plan and it, it really worked so. Well, uh, piggybacking off the question about the freshman class, I mean this is this is now your first Final Four run. Um, you know, how excited are you, obviously, and, um, you know, what are your expectations for this whole week and going into championship weekend at Gillette? Uh, it's kind of funny that you asked that. I think, I mean, from the beginning of, so, I would say August probably, uh, coaches always have the overtime mentality. Um, and you can see it when we play. We always come out really fast. Um, it's early and often, kind of that mentality. So I, I think, like, for as far as expectations, um, We've, we've been playing like that since the beginning, so I think my expectations are kind of set on how we've been playing, uh, but I think we can definitely improve. Bubba, how did Justin Shockey's play today kind of spark the offense? I mean, he kept getting us the ball. Uh, that's what we needed. We needed a couple more possessions. Um, our defense was, was killing it today. We got so many possessions from them, but on top of that, to have face-offs, it was just it was phenomenal. Any more questions for the student-athletes? All right, questions for Coach Tillman. 
Jeff, why did Jack get the role of matching up with Jeff? Uh, we actually, if you watch the game, there were multiple guys on him and uh, over the course of the game, and that was part of the plan was let's just not use one guy. And at times you saw Curtis on, on Jeff, and um, you saw uh, Bryce as well, and then you saw Jack. So we had three guys on him. Um, you know, Jack, we have a lot of confidence in. He's really fast. He plays a lefty really well. Um, so. Uh, we just felt like with three guys that we felt comfortable with, we could constantly, if we needed to, like chase him around and expend a lot of energy. It wasn't going to be just one guy. And then everybody practiced that five-man defense, so we always had fresh guys there too. So um, it, it, to me, it just made sense. Um, and then at times, right, there are going to be times where he's going to get a short six, so you had to play, practice that as well. Um, and then you had to kind of go through that scenario. So he, he's terrific. Um, you, you watch the tape. Um, they are like, like as a lacrosse fan, they are fun to watch. They share the ball. They're slick. They're skilled. And if you're a young lacrosse player, you want to play with Jeff T. Because if you cut, he will throw you the ball. There are times the guys are not even like start. They haven't started to cut. And once you like start to cut, Jeff will throw it, and it's right on your ear. Uh, we showed some clips from the Lehigh game, and they got dunk after dunk after dunk. Like they are the, I think, the top shooting team in the country because they don't have to take a lot of outside shots. Um, so they're terrific. They share the ball. Um, like I said, th th this team is going to be really good down the road. Good things are happening there for sure. Coach, I'm proud of you with the offense due to the fact that the uh, Connor Kelly only had three shots, one goal and yet the offense still put up 13. Uh, does that tell you it's clicking, or what, what does that tell you? Uh, it tells you, you know, we have a lot of good players and a lot of unselfish guys. Uh, it says a lot about Connor. You know, I just talked to him a little bit before, and he just said, you know, I didn't feel like I had to go crazy just because guys are doing well and didn't really feel like I wanted to, to kind of push too hard because things were working and clicking. It's almost a little like, you know, on the other side, certainly they're not – absolutely shutting Connor, but Connor draws a lot of attention, and just like Jeff Cheap does. So at times, like, everybody's a little bit better because Connor's on the field. Um, and, um, you know, Connor, whether it's, you know, you, you kind of stretch out a little too far, maybe the inside gets caught, um, a little bit soft, or, you know, maybe you slide too fast and he throws it, and now all of a sudden somebody's open maybe on the backside. So he, I thought he really did a nice job letting the game come today. Also, Coach, 7-0 in quarterfinals. Uh, that's miraculous. Beyond that, what does it mean to you? Seven times you've been faced going to the Final Four of this team, and you haven't missed yet. Um, I mean, it means we have a lot of really good players. Um, we've had some great coaches. Uh, we've been really fortunate. Um, you know, the game takes funny, the ball takes funny bounces. Um, you kind of saw that last week. Um, I, I certainly don't take anything for granted. Um, you know, you get a chance in the tournament and you do your very best. Um, but when you have like kids like these that are just high character kids that um, you know we push and challenge, but they're so they buy into the team first. They try to do things the right way. Um, they look out for each other. Um, you know they buy into you know all the things we ask them to do academically, community service. Like we ask a lot, and this program isn't for everybody. Um, but I do think like win or lose today, like I knew like the kids, especially the seniors, were ready to take on whatever happens next in life because. We've challenged them on a lot of levels, not just as players, but as people and students. And that's our job, you know, is to have these guys ready for what happens next. Yeah, you want to win games, but there's so much more that we really feel like is important for a student athlete's experience. And, and certainly seeing the smile on their faces today and knowing we have another week together um, and, and to play and represent Maryland and run out behind our flag and our, our state capital. It's a, those are memories our kids will always have. It's pretty special. Coach, you said earlier in the week that you were going to review how everyone else looked at Jeff and kind of approached guarding him. What factored the decision to have three different guys with different looks throughout the game? Um, you know, we, we felt like three fresh guys would be good. Uh, we have pre three pretty flexible guys, too. All those guys are pretty good uh, as Dodgers, and they're pretty good off the ball. So um, we felt like, you know, especially in a hot day, if they expend, one guy expended a lot of energy, um, you know, we could go to somebody else. Also, if somebody got hurt, uh, we didn't want to just, you know, have just Jack do it or just Kurt do it. So uh, we also kind of watched to see who did the best. Um, I, I agree with Kurt. Um, uh, Cal Prickard's a righty. Uh, so 
we didn't have a lefty on for the scout team, so uh, poor Brick had to dodge lefty, and he got beat up a little bit this week. Um, so, uh, but uh, I think you know, kind of looking at everything, we we actually combined a lot of game plans. Um, if you watch the Princeton games, a little bit of the Princeton game plan where we pushed a lot of their Dodgers to the left, um, candidly, um, and you saw that early. And then I thought they made some really good adjustments. Um, you know, we we were really forcing them left, and they drifted us, and 42 gets a goal because we. We really weren't organized uh, behind it. We talked about it. We actually didn't do it right. They got another good look, so we called a timeout just to make sure we were organized. Um, and then, candidly, I think we had the ball so much um, that helped us because when they got the ball back, especially in the fourth, like that clock couldn't have like you know gone any faster. Um, they just kept scoring and scoring. And again, more good adjustments from Pete and the staff. Um, so. Um, but all in all, um, you know, we felt like we, we, we looked at the Brown game plan and they played um, kind of a man down behind it and I just didn't feel like that was us. We had not done that and um, there are so many rules, like if they go to a circle, who pops off, if they don't, you know, and then if they cut another guy in, who takes them. So there's a lot of funny nuances um, and I thought Coach Bernhardt did a really good job. He kind of made it simple for the guys. We adapted what we've done all year with five people, but then we also had the ability, if things didn't work out, we were just going to play regular six on six, um, but also throw in a couple nuances. You just have to keep that group off balance. They're just too talented, and those kids share the ball, and they like they just don't make a lot of turnovers. They're just slick as can be. Any other questions right here in the back? Coach, I, I think it's about uh, 16 points so from freshman and sophomores today. Uh, you asked so much of the, the, that class in particular today. Can you just comment on their performance and how they uh, stood up uh, in this game? Um, yeah, I thought those guys did a really good job and I, I, I agree with Bob's. Um, you know, our, our older players have done a really good job of bringing those guys along um, and helping them and still in confidence. Um, the coaches, you know, Jesse does a good job. He's got a really even keel temperament. Um, you know, there isn't, at his end, like, you know, we do a lot of practicing. We don't stop a lot. Like, he coaches, but there isn't a lot of yelling and screaming, like, things like that. It's a lot of coaching, and then we'll watch the practice film the next day and kind of make the corrections. And I think that works for this group because um, they're not, like, walking on pins and needles and worried about making mistakes. It's literally you're playing and learning and growing. And that's one of the reasons that, you know, I was so ecstatic to have Jesse back is just he understands what it means to be a Terp. He's a really good teacher. Um, and knowing that we had some young guys that were going to play this year, uh, we kind of needed that. I mean, this team is really different than last year. Um, and that's why I'm so proud of them. You know, like, you know, we kind of mentioned at some point this year, you know, Matt Rambo and Colin Heacock aren't walking through that door. Dylan Maltz, you know, John Carino's not here anymore. And obviously those things were said at some point during the year. Um, and even this last month, like I agree, we haven't been great the last month. Um, candidly, I kind of stepped back this week and really tried to reflect and talk to the coaches. Um, and, and this, I don't want to sound like complaining. We just ended up, the schedule was funny. We played a lot of Sunday games. Um, and, and again, part of that's because they wanted to put us on TV, so we're thankful for that. But when you're a college student athlete, like you get into a routine and you play your Saturday game and then you have your Saturday night and Sunday you're off and you can do whatever you want, right? You can sleep in, you can be a kid, um, just enjoy yourself, and then the next day you go to class. We had like three Sunday games in a row, and the kids literally don't get a day off. You play Sunday, we won't practice Monday, but then they go right to school. They really never had a chance just to kind of get their minds right and get fresh. And then the way the schedule worked out, that, that Hopkins game was so taxing, um, and it's a tip my hat to them because it, it, they're a really good team, but it was three overtimes. And then we came back on Thursday against Rutgers, and, and we were gassed, candidly. Like, the, the weather started turning. We didn't do much, um, and that was a tough game. And then we came back with Hopkins, and that was tough. Um, and I just felt like we, we traveled back on Sunday, and again, they didn't really get a, a pure day off because Monday we gave them off from lacrosse, but they had to go back to class. So this week, we actually backed off a lot. Um, our practices were much shorter. Um, we were in exams, and I thought that was important. We wanted to be mentally and physically fresher than we've been in the last six weeks, and I I'll let you guys talk, but I, I really felt like we had more energy, and the kids, like, we were back to kind of where we were six weeks ago. I don't know how you guys feel. Yeah, no, I mean, absolutely. Um, those six weeks were just kind of hard, especially as a freshman. Um, not really used to kind of how rigorous the schedule is, but uh, 
I mean, this whole week we backed off. We had tons of exams last week and this week, so it was kind of nice just to get a, a little break from lacrosse and kind of focus on school. Um, but, I mean, mentally we were always preparing uh, throughout the whole week, but our body felt fresh and we felt fresh coming into this game. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> yeah, I, I felt really good for this game. My, my body felt really good, but I, uh, with Coach backing off a little bit of practice, I felt like we got uh, more quality of reps and we were able to go a lot faster in practice. And that was my comment earlier. I felt like I had a really good practice uh, week this week, so it paid off today. So I just tip my hand off to Coach Tillman there. All right, last questions? All right, thanks. Good luck next weekend, guys. Thank you.